I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in July 2004 at the age of 40. Since my original diagnosis, I've had two recurrences, and right now I'm in my third remission. Clinical trials are a way to test new drugs and treatments that can make patient care better in the future. There are also ways to look at new preventative and screening strategies, particularly for ovarian cancer, that can help to reduce the burden of this disease. We have a very limited number of options in terms of treatment for advanced stage ovarian cancer patients. I heard about clinical trials um, while I was in first-line therapy. My personal strategy is to use clinical trials to expand my treatment options. Clinical trials are really the way that we can move the field forward, the way we can make treatments better in a reliable and unbiased fashion. The benefits of participating in a clinical trial are numerous. Uh, one of the main benefits is it's a way to get access to the earliest and latest treatments that may not be available through other means. You now have options of taking the standard of care with another drug that may be very promising. Getting access to state-of-the-art care, to some of the most promising drugs, some of the most promising therapies, some of the most promising interventions. Another reason to participate in clinical trials is that it's a very structured form of treatment. So the actual treatments that someone's going to receive are very well outlined. You're also getting the benefit of the best and brightest uh, disease management teams for ovarian cancer. The nurses, the staff, everyone who I came in contact with was just wonderful. I've had good communication with my medical team and I feel like I've learned a lot about myself and my disease. There cannot be enough said about uh, empowerment as a, as a cancer patient in terms of taking control of your disease. Phase one clinical trials are really where new drugs are being tested in humans for the first time. They are a little more risky and those trials are very good for patients who don't have other good options. We know that it's safely administered to cells, we know that it's safely administered to animals, but we must at the end of the day determine whether a drug is safe to administer to a human. And in phase two trials, after we've determined safety, we attempt to determine whether a drug is actually effective. Phase three trials really determine whether a drug is better than a standard of care. So in those situations, we may be adding an additional drug to one or two other drugs that are commonly used. After this, this phase three trial is conducted, then a drug works its way into the standard of care. I would advise patients to ask questions. You ask, how is it going to affect me? What's involved? Um, is this a phase one? Is this phase two? Is this a phase three? How long is it going to last? Uh, what are the side effects? Um, you know, what's covered? What may not be covered? And if the clinical trial seems confusing, ask somebody to explain it to you so you can understand what the risks are and the benefits. Keep an open mind. Communicate with your medical team and make your decisions based on information, not fear. There are three misconceptions about clinical trials that I hear over and over again from other survivors. The first misconception is that clinical trials are only for as a last resort. While some trials are for patients who don't have any of the good options, many trials are for patients who really want to just receive the best and the latest treatments. Uh, some patients may be fearful of a clinical trial because they feel like they're only going to be treated like a number and they're going to lose that human aspect of the doctor-patient relationship. And really clinical trials are just a way for doctors to provide the latest treatments and the most promising treatments to patients. Another misconception is that a patient might get a placebo or no treatment at all. A placebo is really a fake drug or a fake treatment, and placebos are only used nowadays when the standard of care would include not giving treatment. So for example, sometimes we would normally just observe a patient, and now we're testing a new drug that might be better than doing nothing. In cancer clinical trials, everyone who needs treatment will get treatment. Clinical trials are generally funded by the government, by academic institutions, or by pharmaceutical companies. Patients should not have to pay any additional money to be part of a clinical trial. I would say that it is very important for patients to specifically ask their doctors or other healthcare personnel what the costs are associated with clinical trials to make sure there are no hidden costs. No doctor can know every trial that's available everywhere at any given time. So, sometimes kind of on the patient to 
do some research and see what's available. So the most reliable way to identify clinical trials is through the National Cancer Institute. They have a website at clinicaltrials.gov. It contains all registered clinical trials throughout the country. Other ways to identify clinical trials is through the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund. Their website at ocrf.org also contains links to many clinical trials that are related to ovarian cancer. Another resource that may be useful for some patients are actually patient advocacy groups. Patients can gain very valuable uh, tips and advice from other patients who have previously gone through clinical trials. Clinical trials are important because right now too many women with ovarian cancers get recurrences. We need better treatments. We desperately need to determine the, uh, the effectiveness of these drugs and these interventions in ovarian cancer. We need a screening test, we need more effective treatments, and we need a cure. Through clinical trials, we're making the care better for people in the future, which includes our wives, our sisters, and our daughters. We'd actually like to turn the long-term beneficial outcomes that we now see in ovarian cancer into bona fide cures where the disease never ever comes back.